More than 60 years after independence, Africa is still struggling with the scars of colonization. Since 2016, a violent crisis has rocked the English-speaking regions of the northwest and southwest of Cameroon. In four years, the conflict has caused at least 2,000 deaths and hundreds of villages have been destroyed. More than 600,000 people have been internally displaced and nearly 60,000 refugees have fled to neighboring countries. But how did we get here? Four keys to understand the crisis in two minutes. In 1922, Cameroon, a former German protectorate, was cut in two. The largest part was placed under French mandate, while the British governed the two western regions bordering Nigeria. The two colonizing countries had very distinct administrative and legal cultures. Centralism and assimilation among Francophones, indirect rule via Nigeria among Anglophones and even federalism from 1954. When French-speaking Cameroon and Nigeria gained independence in 1960, a referendum was held in Cameroon under British rule. The North chose to join Nigeria and the South French-speaking Cameroon, which led to the proclamation of the Federal Republic of Cameroon in 1961. So far, so good. But President Amadou Ahidjo, a proponent of the unitary state, organized a referendum in 1972 that annulled this federalism. As a result, Anglophones felt marginalized even in their own administrative zone and began to feel increasingly cheated. From 2014, the fall in oil prices hit the economy of Cameroon. While not the only issue, it exacerbated the resentment of the English-speaking populations who occupy the oil-producing region of the country and feel they are not receiving their fair share of public spending. In 2016, strikes broke out among teachers and lawyers who were defending their culturally distinct needs against francophones. Yaoundé chose the path of repression, leading to a cycle of particularly bloody violence. In October 2017, the secessionists symbolically proclaimed the independence of Ambazonia. Their leaders were quickly arrested or forced to flee into exile. Financed by the English-speaking diaspora, armed groups organized themselves and held strikes. Human rights abuses on both sides increased insecurity. After three years of stalemate, the government organized a national dialogue at the end of 2019, but refused to discuss independence or even federalism. Officially, only the decentralization provided for in the 1996 constitution is on the agenda. Today, Yaoundé's power seems deadlocked in the face of an uncompromising insurgency and an English-speaking opinion divided between secessionists, federalists and supporters of the simple decentralization it is trying to promote. Negotiations remain at an impasse and millions of people in Cameroon require urgent humanitarian aid.